We're back reading some more MIDA hole today and I hope you guys are excited. Gonna be an absolute adventure like it is every single time and I'm so ready for this. Enjoy guys. Am I the yeho for putting a lien on my brother's house and refusing to remove it until he pays me? I do house renovations as a business. Even when I do work for family and friends at a discount, I have a contract. My nephews are getting bigger and they want separate rooms. My brother asked me to help him finish his basement, make a couple of rooms down there, add a washroom, add a kitchenette, and wire up a family room. I priced it out and I said I'd charge him 32000 including material. This was a sizable discount. The bathroom alone I'd charge anybody else 15000 His wasn't even roughed in. He never paid me. He always had excuses. Excuses. I paid for the material and I paid my guys for the work. We did it when I had downtime so I didn't lose out on other money. But it still sucked to get shafted. So I put a construction lien on the house. He didn't care and I wasn't going to make him homeless. That was two years ago. Now he got a new job and he has to move. And to get a new house he has to sell his current house. Which he can't do because there's a lien against the property. He called me to get me to remove it. He promised he would pay me as soon as it sold. I told him, F you, pay me. My parents called me to tell me that they would pay what he owes. I said I'd agree so long as he paid them back. And if he didn't then any money he didn't pay back had to come out of any inheritance that we were getting, God forbid, and that interest started accruing from the day of the loan. They agreed that that was fair. My brother called me to scream at me for involving my parents and about the inheritance. I reminded him that he involved them, not me. He finally took money out from a credit line and paid me, with interest. I'm a reasonable man. The house sold over asking and the finished basement suite made a huge difference on what he got. He is still pissed at me for doing it, but I did everything legal and by the books. No, you're not the a-hole OP. What did your brother expect? Like what, your brother was never gonna pay you and he thinks that's okay? Like how would you ever be the a-hole in this situation? The top comment says not the a-hole. Who thinks you are besides him? And OP said his wife, her parents and my parents aren't happy. Yeah but that doesn't even make sense. Like what have you done? You were giving your brother such a huge discount already and the brother felt like it was okay to never pay you. Like this other comment says not the a-hole. Brother seems like he was trying to get it for free and never would have paid you unless you forced the issue. F you pay me sounds like an entirely reasonable approach here. Yeah, it does sound like that, doesn't it? Like he was never gonna pay. Like, oh, you're my brother. You'll do it for free, surely. And from what OP said here, it's not like it was only OP who was doing the work. OP obviously has a construction crew, so they need to get paid for their work as well because it said there, I paid for the material and I paid for my guys for the work. So yeah, OP's already paid for this out of their own pocket. And what, the brother thinks that's okay? Yeah, of course you're not the a-hole, OP. I don't understand how they feel like you are. Like this other comment says, not the a-hole, but well, your brother has some balls. Give me 30,000 plus in renovation so I can stiff you. Damn, people cut others out for less. Yeah, that's a lot of money to not pay somebody. Story number two. Am I the yeho for taking back a gift after I learned that the birthday person would not be the one who's using it? My daughter Jenny, 13, has a best friend Morgan, nearly 13. The two spend a lot of time together at our place. I don't know Morgan's mother very well as Jenny doesn't often go to their house. This is mainly because Morgan's house is a little chaotic. She has four siblings. Jenny is an only child and Morgan has said that she likes the quiet. Morgan has done a lot of stuff with us. I occasionally enter radio and online competitions and I'll win tickets to certain local events. When I won four tickets to a concert last year, Jenny and I brought Morgan along with one other friend. We all had a blast. Recently, I won another pair of tickets to a concert that I plan to attend with Jenny. A few days after, I was told about a work trip that I have to take that falls that weekend. Jenny usually comes with me, so Jenny suggested that we give the tickets to Morgan for her birthday. She could either go with another friend or her mum. I checked with Morgan's mum before we mentioned this and she said that was fine. Last night, Morgan was at our house and she seemed upset. When I asked her why, she said that her mum was taking her brother to the concert. Oh, what? Because her brother has never been to a concert before. I asked if Morgan's brother even liked the band and Morgan said no. It was just the principle of the matter. Morgan and her other three siblings have been to concerts. He hasn't and since they can't afford stuff like this, he gets to go. I found this unfair and honestly a waste of tickets. I called Morgan's mum to double check this story and she confirmed it all, including her 11 year old son barely knowing anything about the band. I said I'm sorry but I don't feel right giving these as a birthday gift anymore as these were for Morgan. I said that we'd give them to Jenny and Morgan's other friend, who I know likes the band, and we'll get Morgan something else for her birthday. Morgan is fine with this. Now Morgan's mum is pissed and saying that I'm trying to tell her how to parent. I don't think I am because if a different friend gave Morgan the tickets and it was the same result, as crappy as I'd find her mum doing this, I wouldn't say anything as it's not my business. As I'm giving the tickets, I want them to go to Morgan. I'd also maybe feel different if the brother loved the band too, but he doesn't. I don't want to give them to them. So I'm left wondering if I'm the ass here. No, you're not OP. And that's such a crappy thing of Morgan's mum to do. 
do? Like what, they're planning on taking Morgan's gift away and giving it to their other kid? Nah. The top comment says, not the yay hole. Please tell you're just as curious as to what is really going on because that's insane. Why is her mum dragging a kid to a concert if the kid doesn't even want to go? If we were friends, I'd volunteer my own money to Morgan's mum to take little brother to a concert that he may actually enjoy. Because why? Talk about an utter, utter waste. Kid's gonna hate it. Morgan is gonna be pissed. You're gonna be pissed. Does the mum like the band? But then why bring uninterested kid? I don't get it. Morgan's mum must be going through something. I feel bad for her because clearly something else is afoot. This is the dumbest of all possible plans. Why is she fighting for it? I'd love to know what's really going on. I'd feel better if Morgan's mum just took the tickets herself and went on a date. I could understand that. Mother of five really wanting to go out. Okay, I understand. Still an a-hole move, but at least I understand. And OP said the mum doesn't even like the band either. It's a group directed at teens. Not saying adults can't like it, but she's already said that it isn't her thing and she's only going as the 11 year old and Morgan are too young to go together. I suspect that the mum has a lot of guilt about not being able to afford these things and is trying to make it fair without realising equality doesn't equal equity. Yeah, now all five kids will have gone to a concert, but the other four have seen bands that they enjoy. This kid's going to a concert that he won't enjoy, just in the spirit of first concert. Oh yeah, you're definitely not the yay hole OP. That was a gift that you were giving to Morgan. Morgan's mum doesn't get to take that gift away. And also that's not you telling her how to parent. You're just saying I gave this as a gift to Morgan and you're taking it away from Morgan and that's not okay. And it isn't okay. That's bloody awful. I don't understand the thought process here and I don't understand the audacity to even feel like you could do that because there were two tickets. It's not like Morgan also gets to go. No, the mum took the two tickets and is choosing to take her son even though they were a present to Morgan. That's so wild. And yeah, the son doesn't even like the band. Yeah, no, of course you're not the yay hole OP. Post number three is called Am I the yay hole for refusing to visit my mother-in-law after she fat shamed me following the birth of my baby? I 26 female and my husband 26 male just welcomed our first baby a few months ago. Him and I are overjoyed and I'm so in love with our tiny bundle. My family has been super supportive, bringing us dinners and making sure that we had time for napping while we adjusted to parent life. My husband's family is different from mine in a lot of ways. They didn't want to visit us and they only wanted us to come to them. They live about 20 minutes away and didn't really care to offer much support following the birth. We were fine with it and we brought our baby over when we were able to, around three times a month. After the first month, my mother-in-law began commenting about how much she prioritized losing the baby weight after she had her first baby. At first, I didn't think anything of it. I thought she was just voicing her experience as many people do when they're around babies. She then started commenting on my baby's chubby cheeks and how similar they are to mine. I felt a bit hurt, but I let it slide once again. The final straw was when my husband was talking to her casually about me wanting to start going on runs again and how we were planning on making it work since our baby is very attached to me. She very loudly said, you're thinking about trying to run? Shouldn't you start with walking? His whole family was in the room and looked at me waiting for my answer. I'm an avid runner who only stopped due to my pregnancy and her comment really hurt. When I was a teenager, I had a really bad eating disorder, one that I'm still struggling with. Comments on my body or physical abilities are hurtful to hear and she's somebody who I knew talked about people's bodies behind their backs, but I didn't think she would be so mean to my face. I'm not skinny by any means, but I live a healthy and active lifestyle, so my weight should not be my concern. This is where I feel like the yay hole. I don't want to see her anymore. She makes me feel like crap about myself and my husband is backing me 100%. His mum is angry because she thinks that we're just keeping her grandchild away from her and believes it's unfair. He goes there without me but it is difficult to take her baby because she's exclusively breastfed and refuses bottles of any kind. Am I the a-hole? Edit. After reading the first few comments I realised that I left out some information. I'm currently 5 months postpartum and I have been fully cleared by my doctor to begin my running regimen. No, you're not the a-hole OP. Your mother-in-law needs to stop saying stuff like that. And she also needs to realise that her actions have consequences. Like yeah, you don't want to be around her anymore because she makes you feel feel like crap. That's not your fault OP. Commenting on anybody's weight for any reason. Like why? Come on. It's so unnecessary. And like the top comment says, not the a-hole. Commenting on the weight of somebody who just had a baby is an incredible a-hole move. Nobody asked her. Yeah, mind your own business mother-in-law. Oh, it's so frustrating. And these weird sort of passive aggressive backhanded comments. Get out of here with that sort of stuff. And the mother-in-law can't say it's unfair. Oh, I'm being rude to somebody and now they don't want to be around me. But because of the rude stuff that I say? Oh no, are they the consequences of my actions? Like is your mother-in-law not able to be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that or maybe I had no place to even make those sorts of comments. It is good to hear that your husband is backing you 100% though, OP. That's good at least. But yeah, you are so not the a-hole. Of course you're not gonna wanna be around somebody who makes you feel like crap. Post number four is called, am I the a-hole for refusing to make a cookie table for my son's wedding? My son is marrying Wendy and the wedding is this summer. She's not close to her own mother for multiple reasons and is pushing hard to have me fill in
fill in the gap. I'm not comfortable with it at all, especially with how hard she's pushing. She has multiple times overstepped boundaries such as inviting herself along, discussing very personal issues, very touchy, etc. And due to these problems, we're not very close and my own daughters are not a huge fan of her. She asked me this week if I would make the cookie table for the wedding. It's something the bride's own mother would do with other female relatives. This is the first time I've heard about this tradition and I did some research. I'd have to make over a thousand cookies from scratch to feed the wedding guests. I asked my daughters if they wanted to do it and it was a strong no. I informed her that I can't do it. It's way too much work and I don't have the time. She told me okay and I thought that was it. My son called me up and told me that I'm a huge jerk. That Wendy has been crying about it and I should step up. I'm still refusing to do it. Am I the yay hole? Edit some common questions. Did daughter-in-law tell me the number? Yeah, she stated 1,000 to 1,200. What about family helping? She isn't close to her family so her side is out. My parents are in a home. I'm an only child. My husband has a sister and I doubt she wants to help. Daughter does not wish to so it'd basically be me. Of course you're not the yay hole for saying that you don't want to make a thousand cookies on your own but you do seem really cold towards your daughter-in-law. Did it say they've done anything wrong? Overstep boundaries such as inviting yourself along, discussing very personal issues and being very touchy. Right, okay, well yeah, of course you're not the gay hole for not making 1200 cookies on your own. But like this comment says, there seems to be a huge empathy gap here from you towards your daughter-in-law. It sounds like she has little to no family support. She is probably hoping to be closer to her in-laws. It may also mean that her eagerness is causing her to display poor social skills. It also sounds like you and your daughters are only seeing that as an imposition to you and not offering any grace. You may reflect on what you've done to establish better boundaries with your daughter-in-law and to acknowledge her own experiences because from the tone of your writing it sounds like you've decided that she's annoying and you and your daughters are mean girling the hell out of someone who wants to be close to you without having adult conversations about boundaries. You seem to be judging her for having a poor relationship with her family. That's an odd choice. Sometimes in-laws step up in times like these to bridge the gap for traditions that their future family members desire because their own family is not safe or supportive. They may do it to support their family member, in this case your son rather than the in-law. You can certainly choose not to do that but the relationship with your future daughter-in-law and your son is likely to be affected by the result. How embarrassing it must be for her to have a valued tradition like the cookie table and absolutely no personal family to take up the task. How mortifying to have to ask future family members and then be told no. I think you may be the a-hole in general based on how you write about this young woman who seems to have had a rough go family wise. Yeah, 100%. But yeah, does that mean that you should make a thousand cookies on your own? Of course not. But there has to be some sort of compromise you can come to. Yeah, like this comment says, do people ever think in compromise on Reddit? It's a cookie table. Set up a table. One of her bridesmaids and you and her fiance and her sends a note to every family or couple coming and ask them to bring a dozen cookies. We did this for a friend who got married in Pittsburgh. We got homemade, store-bought cupcakes, brownies and since I don't bake, fudge. No one cared that it wasn't all homemade. It was fun and everybody got a nice selection for their gift bag. Yeah, it really just sounds like you don't want anything to do with your daughter-in-law OP. Like your daughter-in-law wouldn't be crying about the fact that you don't want to make the cookies. She'd be upset because you're pretty much pushing her away. But no, you're not the a hole because you don't want to make 1200 cookies on your own. But it shouldn't have ended there. There should have been a compromise. I feel like this could have all been a lot more kind and understanding. But also, OP did leave a comment here that said she told me from scratch, as in the daughter-in-law didn't want store-bought cookies. She wanted them all to be made from scratch. I think she thought my daughter will be interested but they aren't but she basically said the mothers do this right okay well you know obviously she can't expect you to do that all on your own and OP also left this comment my parents are old and in a home I'm an only child my daughters don't have kids or are married my husband has a sister but she's older and I highly doubt that she'd be interested his parents are dead she doesn't really talk to her family so that gets rid of that whole side so yeah it would be me making a thousand cookies yeah well that's not realistic either right okay so <laughs> I think you definitely are not the a-hole OP. It's just sad though because it seems like the daughter-in-law is trying to get closer to you and I hope that does happen but she can't expect you to make all these cookies on your own and if your daughter-in-law isn't willing to compromise then yeah that isn't your fault. Okay let's move on. Am I the a-hole for telling my stepdad that feeding his kids is not my problem and so what when he tried to say that they'd go hungry? My mum had a major surgery two weeks ago. She's still in the hospital and won't be home for another few weeks. I 16 male am home with my stepdad and my half-brother and sister since my dad isn't in the picture but my half-siblings go to our grandparents during the day and my stepdad picks them up after work. Sometimes he'll keep them with our grandparents for a few extra hours if he is visiting mum and stuff. My stepdad also has two kids from his other marriage. His daughter is 11 and his son is 10. My stepdad's kids treat my mum like crap. They're being trained to act like that by their mum. And my stepdad and her have been in court so many times in the last five years but nothing has changed with their behaviour towards mum and him and his ex still fight often about it. His kids call my mum names, say that she feeds them crap, tell her that she's fat and ugly and they gag
gag whenever they know she cooked for everybody? It's gross. Ew. How could you be so awful? They sound bloody insufferable, OP. They told my mum that their mum was better than her in every single way and she'll never be good. My stepdad punishes them and all that, but it's crazy how hateful they are to my mum. They're also really rude to mum's family. I don't really have any affection or patience for them, so we don't interact, but mum gets it a lot. When my mum was brought to the hospital, they said, good, we hope she dies. Oh, get out of here. My stepdad looked incredibly pissed at them and he intervened immediately, but all of this means I want nothing to do with them and I'm so glad when they're not at our house. I really dislike them. Oh my God, of course you dislike them, OP. How dare they say stuff like that? I can't get over that. Of course you don't like them. My stepdad wants me to feed his kids anyway. He gets home late and he doesn't want to pay for them to stay with the sitter for an hour or two. He also doesn't want to send them to their mum, which I get. So he wants me to provide some food for them and I said no. He told me his kids need to eat and I said it's not my issue and he does not want me left in charge of his kids ever. He told me they'll go hungry without somebody to prepare something and I said so what? He told me that my attitude could use some work. Bro, your kids are literally said they hope that OP's mum died. What, you think that doesn't need work? He said that he needs my help and he's sorry they said what they said, but I need to understand that their mum has poisoned them so much. He told me that it won't be forever and I make myself food already, so can't I make some extra food? Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole, OP. Your stepdad is lucky that you even look at the kids anymore. If I told somebody that my mum was in hospital and they told me, good, I hope she dies in there, I would never speak to them again. And that's the end of it. You can't say stuff like that. And also, they're not going to start your stepdad can sort something out And yeah, you're right, OP It 100% is not your responsibility It's wild the stepdad even feels like you need to do it Like this comment says Not the a-hole They wished your mother dead That's the end Yeah, definitely There's no coming back from that You can't say that to somebody And then expect everything to be fine Yeah, you're not the a-hole, OP And I feel like that's definitely enough for today We need to read something a lot more wholesome My sister's dog was at the park And another golden retriever ran up to play After talking to the owner It turns out they're brothers from the same litter. Look at this good boy reunion. Oh, that's so beautiful. Wow, that's so special. Do they recognize each other? It seems like they do. That is so cute. And it feels so good to read this after what we just read. Tulip Field in the Netherlands. This looks like a place where all your worst troubles and fears would just disappear. Yeah, that's so pretty. There are so many too. Look at that right photo. Like an infinite amount of tulips. Yeah, that looks like something out of a fairy tale. Oh, cute. A Garfield comic. But nothing is more important than holding somebody you love. Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, that's right, Garfield. That's so cute and a perfect place to end today's episode. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more MIT Gay Hole episodes, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Arrow Bliss. Here in under 10 minutes, that's a first. Thank you for keeping me entertained at work. Oh, no worries. Thank you for watching the episodes. I'm so happy you enjoyed them and I really appreciate the support. There's many more videos to come. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was scary, but definitely fun. Okay, I'm out of here. Make sure you look after yourself, guys, and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!